Living in the short attention span society we live in today, it's crucial to load your website very very fast, or at least load the important bits first. And this can be achieved with streaming or partial loading. And in today's video I'm going to be talking about what streaming is, why it's useful and how to set it up on your Next.js application. Now you might be wondering what streaming actually is. So streaming is a data transfer technique that allows you to break down your page into smaller chunks and stream them from the server to the client as they become ready. And this is not actually something new, a lot of the most famous websites use it, like Amazon. And apart from the good user experience, Google actually also cares about the performance of your website and the first contentful paint of your website which helps with ranking your page higher on Google search results. Now if you use streaming, what that means is that the users will be able to interact with your website without waiting for all the data to load. Imagine you have a dashboard and you have a very complex user analytic request that takes a couple of seconds to resolve. You could block the whole page from rendering while waiting for that request or you can render some of the data and then when that request comes in you will render out that particular component of your website. And in Next.js they've made this very simple and there's basically two ways you can implement streaming in your application on a page level with the loading TSX or on a component level with the suspense component. Now let's break this down with an actual practical example. I have here a blog page that renders blog posts, which is basically making an API request to get all the blog posts and renders them out. And this is an asynchronous component, which is not great. I'm not sure why people will have this, but there's other ways to get around this with using state and use effect and stuff like that. But if you were to have an asynchronous component that waits for some request to resolve, then this is how this would look. And now I don't have any streaming implemented. So let's see how this looks when I load the page. And you can see here it keeps loading and then it renders the whole page at once. So this request takes some time to load, which like I said, is not ideal. The user will click away if they need to wait for a long time. Well, this took two seconds to load any content on the website. That's bad. Google recommends 1.6 seconds or less for your first contentful paint on your website. Now let's implement the loading TSX. And this is very easy. Basically, add a loading .tsx file in the page and it can look like this or you can add skeletons here or whatever you want to add but now let's see how fast the website loads now we can see the website loads and we still have the loading post loader but the first content was painted in 26 milliseconds now it still took two seconds for the content to load but the page was there if i had more stuff here on this page the user can interact with them and doesn't have to wait for this component to load Cool, that's one way. Now, because I basically have two delays here, I've kind of simulated a delay in the blog page and I have another in the fetch blog post. This also waits for two seconds. That's why we had the two second delay um, for, the, for the first time to load because if you have one second here in the blog page and we have one second for the API request to resolve or the simulated API request to resolve. Cool, so now let's use the suspense loading here and you can see what I mean. So here I'm, I wrap my blog posts around with the suspense and we can provide a fallback for what will be displayed until we actually wait for the blog post to be loaded. And this I've named it blog skeleton which basically says loading. I didn't really go through the effort of actually creating a skeleton but that's how we would implement suspense and streaming with suspense. So now this, when I reload the page, we can see the loading blog post and then another loading for the actual API request. If I remove this here, now let's see how this can look. So now the loading, this is actually the blog skeleton. Now just to show you that this actually comes from here. I've changed the, the text here. So if I reload now, it says loading blog posts. And this means that the suspend is falling back to the blog skeleton while it waits for the blog post to load. 
And like I said, this can be very useful. We have a dashboard with a lot of different charts and different cards and whatever. Or in a blog post, you might have a sidebar with a lot of different components in there, like the popular post or the newest post. And each of those can be a separate API call. And these can be loaded using streaming when they're ready and the user doesn't have to wait for them to load. That's basically how we can implement streaming in Next.js. There are other ways we can do this and obviously Next.js come up with their own way, which is great, but you can use suspense in a lot of different situations. For example, if you have an MFE and you need to load a component from the different MFE, you can use suspense there so you can show a loading state while you wait for the component to load. Lots of different situations where suspense is very useful and because it has a fallback, you can create great skeletons. I think the Shatsi and UI library uses it. If you have any feedback, put down in the comments or if you have any ideas for something that you want me to cover, again, put it down in the comments below. Like this video, subscribe if you haven't already, do all the things for the YouTube algorithm. Appreciate your time. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day. Happy coding.